Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and I'm very excited to show you the new iPad Air M2 2024 iPad Air which comes in two sizes, the 11 inch and the 13 inch. In this video I will be showing you the 13 inch iPad Air but it's pretty much the same ideas and same tips for the 11 inch as well. Now inside the package with this iPad which does come in four different colors you get a little bit of paperwork, nothing too interesting, and no Apple stickers if you're looking forward to those. Unfortunately, they're not here, as well as the USB-C power brick, and then the USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Now in this video, I'm gonna divide it up into a hardware tour, software tour, accessories, and then extra tips and tricks. So if you just want the extra tips and tricks, you can stay towards the end, but for now, let's do a beginner's dive of this hardware. bottom you can see we have some speaker grills as well as a USB-C charging port and as I'll show you later this USB-C port can also be used to power other devices not just to charge this iPad. On the right hand side you can see the magnet that will be used to connect an Apple Pencil if you end up buying one and this can also charge the Apple Pencil as well on this right hand side. And then you also have the up and down volume buttons on the side. Now with these newer iPads, I don't like this new feature, but these buttons do rotate. So instead of this button always being up and this button always being down, depending on where you're rotated, it'll be the rightmost button is up, the leftmost button is down, or the top is up and the bottom is down. So rotated here, you can see that the right button increases the volume and the left button decreases it. Then if you rotate it this way, the top button increases and the bottom button decreases. I wish there was a way to turn this off, but there is currently not. And up top, you can see the other half of the stereo speaker combination. And then you also have your power button, which doubles as a fingerprint reader. So this will be used to lock your device as well as to unlock it with your fingerprint. Holding it launches Siri, as you can see right there. Now, if you ever want to power off this iPad, you're going to press the up volume button, the down volume button, and then hold the power button, and there you can slide to power off. Okay, so now let's do a brief tour of the software. So as you can see, you can tap the screen to wake it up, and then you slide up to turn it on to get to your home screen. When you're in an application, it's the same gesture up to get home. Now, if you go up and hold it a little bit, you get into your multitasking. And for multitasking, if you want, you can drag two apps on top of each other to create a split screen window just like this. When you're within a split screen, you can drag the middle portion back and forth to change the proportion. So it can be 50-50 or something more like 25-75. And if you wanna go full screen on any of these apps, you simply drag it all the way to the end and you can full screen that application. Now up top, you will always have these three little dots. And if the app is able to be split screen, so for instance, the settings app is not able to do this, so there's no three dots. But if we go back here, you can see it presents us with some options. So split view, and then it lets us pick another app of our choosing. Or you can see we can click slide over, which will pull up the app on the side. And if we launch a different application, it'll remain on the side here. Now also, if you ever need to force quit an application, you simply swipe up like we did for the multitasking. And then if you swipe up, it will force close that app. Typically, you don't need to do this though, unless the app is running poorly. Up in the top right hand corner is Control Center, which is very handy for getting to quick actions from brightness, dark mode, night shift to make it more warm at night, to your volume. If you have AirPods, you can control them there, to media, to quick controls, then you have your different do not disturb and focus profiles. Rotation lock, which can be very handy, especially on a big iPad like this, and then other quick controls. Now you also have the ability to customize these very quickly and easily by going into your settings app, going down to control center, and then you can add or remove them from here. For instance, if you have an Apple TV, you might wanna add the Apple TV remote. If you never take your iPad out of silent mode, you might wanna turn, take that off. And then you can put do other things such as low power mode. Control center lives right in the middle. So you slide it down from the center and you'll get into your notification center. Now another nice feature is say you get a notification from an app like here, I have a message. And I no longer want to get notifications from this particular app. I can slide over, click option, and then go ahead and turn off all message notifications. So I will no longer get message notifications on this iPad, but you can use that for any app.
If you want to change your wallpaper, Apple's made this a little bit more confusing over the years, but also added a lot more customization. So you can still go to your settings and then go down to wallpaper. And there you can see your different wallpaper combinations. Now clicking customize doesn't let you change the actual wallpaper, but just allows you to customize the different data and widgets you show. So if you want to add a whole new wallpaper itself, go ahead and click the plus button in the settings or from your lock screen, you tap and hold and then you unlock the iPad and it will bring you into these settings. So we'll click plus. And from here, you can choose different photos that you want, tons of different styles. And then you can customize the widgets by clicking here and you can add some different widgets. So this is a really nice way of customizing your lock screen. And then you can click add. And then you can set wallpaper pair if you want. And then you have a new wallpaper. I'm gonna go back to the previous one I had by going over here and clicking set as current. And now I have a new wallpaper. You can always add new widgets by holding down on your home screen and clicking the plus button in the top left hand corner. And there you can add any widget you want. So let's say I want a podcast widget, I tap and hold, bring it to my home screen and I let go. Now if you want to customize your home screen more, you can tap and hold and click the three buttons down there and you can actually show which pages remain on your iPad. So if you don't want this page, you can quickly disable that. And all of a sudden I have one page. So you can see that anything else will just be my app library. Now, one great feature of the OS is live text. Now you can do this from the camera app when you scan information, you scan text or from a screenshot. So say you have an image with text as this image with text shows. Now I'm gonna take a screenshot by sliding up from the bottom left hand corner and now with this little icon up here, it'll highlight all the text that I can see. And now I can copy or paste any text. Now this is particularly useful for URLs or phone numbers or uh, different type of information from images that you wouldn't normally be able to copy or paste. And now you can save all these options, such as copy it, paste somewhere else. I can look it up, I can translate it if it's a different language, I can search the web or more. So that's a really nice feature that I like to use. Now, if you wanted to write on this page instead, so say this was a document, uh, you could highlight or circle things, and then you can share it by clicking the share button, or you can click done, save it to your photos, save it to your files, or save it as a quick note in your notes application. Okay, now I wanna look at some cases for the iPad because there are a ton of options, and my favorite manufacturer is probably ESR, and they are the sponsor of this segment of the video, but everything I say about them, I really do believe. First is the Shift Series Magnetic Case, which at its core is a protective snap-on hard shell case that always stays on your iPad for protection. But then you can attach it to the magnetic folio case to add more protection and screen coverage. And ultimately it features nine different stand options from 15 degrees to 75 degrees, including a raised screen view. And the best feature is that there's also a vertical option for scrolling or any other vertical use mode because of the magnets in this case. It's just really well designed all around. Secondly is the Rebound Series Magnetic Keyboard Case 360, which gives you all the perks of Apple's expensive keyboard, but more protection, a much cheaper price tag, a clasp to secure your Apple Pencil or other stylus, and the ability to view your iPad, again, in vertical mode. And finally, you can also attach your iPad straight to it or use the included protective case just as in the previous case we looked at. Now, ESR also offers a really clever magnetic screen protector that is perfect for when you're trying to use your iPad for note taking or drawing to get that paper like experience. Then you can take it off when you're done and store it for when you want the full glossy clarity of your iPad's display. And lastly, my favorite case is the very simple and minimal rebound magnetic case, which is super thin, fits like a glove, protects your iPad from scratches, adds color and grip, is affordable, and adds different viewing angles to your iPad. This is my personal favorite. And you check out the links to all of these down below. Okay, now in terms of styli, this is one of my favorite features of having an iPad, is taking notes, journaling, writing, uh, doing all types of things with a stylus. Now you can go for the $129 new Apple Pencil Pro, which is pretty sweet and has some new functions, including a haptic motor inside. So when you press down, you can actually feel a little bit of a vibration inside. It also has Find My Tracking in case you were to ever lose it. That's pretty sweet, but it's $129. 
You can also get the USB-C Apple Pencil for $79, which is also very good. It lacks the haptic feedback, it lacks the Find My Tracking, and you do have to manually plug it in to charge it via USB-C, which is much less convenient than just plugging it and attaching it to your iPad, but it still works well and uses the same charger that the iPad does itself. So if that's not a big deal for you, then no problem. You can also get these much cheaper options. So this is from ESR, this is 30 bucks, still attaches magnetically to your iPad and it lacks all the fancy features. It doesn't have any double tap to change your pencil and eraser, doesn't have find my tracking and the tilt sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. But for 30 bucks, this is a really solid option. If you're just looking for the basic pencil writing actions, and there's always the double tap with two fingers to undo when you're writing anyway. So that kind of mimics other features. And then Logitech also makes a USB-C option for 38 bucks uh, if you get it refurbished. So I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check that out. That is pretty much the same as this ESR one in terms of not having any fancy features, but it does not attach magnetically at least to the side of the iPad, um, but it's still a really good option. So there's a few different options if you want a stylus. You can pay anywhere from $30 to $130, depending on what exactly you're looking for. And then one last note in terms of accessories, the USB-C port on your iPad is actually really powerful. So not only can you connect it to things such as USB-C SSDs, like the SanDisk drive that I have, but you can also charge other devices from this cable. So here, for instance, I have a USB-C to Apple Watch adapter, and I can go ahead and charge my Apple Watch right from the iPad, which is a really sweet feature, uh, and something I do often when I travel. That way I just don't need to bring as many wall outlets. But you can also charge bigger devices, such as an iPhone or something else like a Garmin running watch from this as well. Now what's cool about this Apple Watch charger is that if you have AirPods, you can also charge your new AirPods uh, via your Apple Watch charger. So there's lots of possibilities with that USB-C cable there. Okay, now let's get into other miscellaneous tips and tricks for your iPad. So one that I really like in the new updates is the ability to copy a subject. So if you go onto this image, for instance, if I were to click it and drag it into my Notability app, pretty cool feature, but you see it includes the background behind it, which doesn't look super good. So what you can do instead is click and hold on it, and then click the Copy Subject button. And now if I go over to Notability, I paste image, it will paste it without the background because your iPad just basically copied what it viewed was the main subject. And now I don't have a background and I think that looks much better. Secondly, by default, if you use autofill in something like Safari, when you're filling in a password to Amazon or any website, it will ask you to confirm the autofill with your finger using Touch ID. But you can turn that off and this is something that I do turn off. In order to do this, you go into Touch ID and passcode and then you turn off password autofill and this will allow you to automatically uh, do your autofill without having to confirm with your passcode, which is, I think, a really nice feature. Next is a really great feature in Safari. So say you have a web page that you want to read. If you want to read it kind of without distractions, you go ahead and hold on to the AA button up top, and then you get the really nice reader mode. From there, you can also have the web page be read to you in a really organic sounding voice. So if you click the button again, and you click listen to page, It'll actually start reading it to you. Here's what you, need to know. And then you can control the speaking rate and you also jump forward and backward. And then you can also leave the app and this will basically just be like music that you're listening to. Now one super handy feature in the keyboard, if you're typing, you hold down your space bar and you can use that as a cursor for moving around to different spots. So next you can control the playback speed of videos just about anywhere now on your iPad. So if you have a video, and you go down to the little speed icon at the bottom and click on that, you can change the playback speed of the video you're watching, which is really handy. Now, a really nice feature on iOS is that pretty much no matter where you are, you can drag and drop multiple things. So you can do this in photos if you want to move multiple photos into an editing application, or a really easy example would be with your favorite app. So if you're trying to move them to a different screen, you can hold one and tap multiple and you can drag them and drop them somewhere else. But you can also do that with files. So here I have in the files app, I can do multiple and I could drag these to a different application to sync them or email them or anything like that. 
So those are the tips and tricks for using your new iPad. Let me know your thoughts uh, and thank you very much for watching and make sure to check out ESR cases and accessories down below.